Welcome to another episode of the Sage Holistic Show. My name is Emily Sellis and I'm your host. Today I am so happy to bring to you Renee Lorch and Liana Huseman, both licensed marriage and family therapists at Sage Holistic Health and Wellness Center, talking about the importance of balancing career and motherhood. Have a listen. Sage is a 501c3 nonprofit organization building community by providing education and counseling about physical, mental, and spiritual well being. We encourage all of our listeners to find their own path to what holistic wellness means to you. I am Renee, and I am a licensed marriage and family therapist and Reiki practitioner at Sage. Hi, I'm Liana Huseman. I am also a licensed marriage and family therapist at Sage Wellness Center. And Renee and I are both mothers and, you know, we have careers. And so we thought, why not blend what we talk about on the daily through text and calling and just kind of uh, hold a platform and space for motherhood and, and finding the balance between having a career and being a mom. So we thought what, you know, what better time than to do it now and to just connect with anyone who's watching. Hopefully we have viewers. I know we're, we're super late. To the game. <laughs> if not, that's on time. Cool. We were on time. We just, <laughs> you know, you know, I think it just, I think it is so perfect to just, it just makes sense to um, think about how a situation like this is just feels so normal to these times right now, because we just cannot, I feel like it's a reminder that we cannot hold on to any type of outcome because when we feel like we have things figured out, it just, you know, changes on us. And absolutely. I think it's the uh, expectations, right? We as mothers have these wild expectations of what motherhood should be, what our career should look like and how we should feel. And I think we do a lot of these, a lot of it for us, right? We, we create these scenarios in our head and we just hope that it goes our way. And, and many times, just like right now, it doesn't, we don't really have a lot of control. And so it, 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 it promotes this imbalance in our life, right? Like we are kind of creating that environment for ourselves, which is awful, right? Like motherhood is hard enough, yet we add to it. We're adding to this perfectionism and we're adding to right. what we think we're supposed to look like, what we're supposed to be like. And it's exhausting, you know, it, it really is. Yeah. I was just telling you earlier, um, I just had this conversation with um, a, another mother, a working mom. And I feel like there's, it, it's so important to me to talk about the idea of the good enough mom, because you know, there are these expectations that we have to, we put pressure on ourselves. I know I do. I put pressure on myself. And when things don't go the way that I planned or the way I feel like they should go within my, like with my kids, I tend to put that pressure on myself and that blame on myself that, oh, it's my fault. It didn't work out that way. And that's not fair. It's really not fair. So I really appreciate, I don't even know. I feel like it's like a a theorist or somebody I'm sure um, hopefully watching knows who coined it, but there's this idea of um, the good enough mom, the good enough parent. And I really appreciate that term because it just, it kind of takes that pressure off and, and just kind of puts that, it just normalizes the experience that balance is possible when our expectations are reasonable. And mm. there's no such thing as a perfect mom and a perfect working, you know, person, you, you just, you have to just accept good enough because sometimes it falls apart. Like Facebook lives that don't, that don't go live when you hit, you know, you hit the button. So it's just, I think being flexible, just really learning to be flexible and, and laughing when things don't go right and <laughs> not taking yourself so seriously. Absolutely. And that's, that's hard. You know, when you become a mom, I'm a mom of a toddler who's almost two and just about almost two years ago, I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea. And, you know, I came from a background of an individual who works, you know, I've worked my whole adult life, you know, always having at least one or two jobs, always staying busy. 
Mm -hmm. And then I became a mom. And then I was like, what now? Who am I? What does this mean? And I didn't go back to work immediately. And I was super surprised by that because I love being a mom. And I was so thrown off by the idea that I could be both. I could love my job or my career and what I'm doing, but I, I can also love being a mom. That's a concept that I didn't know existed prior to having my child. And so what do you do with that? What do you do with this new identity? And I found myself when I went back to work here at Sage, um, not knowing how to behave, right? Like I'm going to talk about my kid a little bit, but I need to be me. I need to be professional. I need to show everyone that I got what, you know, I have what it takes and that I'm no less of a person than before I had a child. And real quickly, I realized that was crap. Like that's not okay because I am a mom and I do enjoy it. And that is a part of my identity now. So who I am as a therapist and who, for whoever is watching, whatever career you're in, whatever role you are, like you are more than just that. You are more than that title. You have now added to yourself. You've added another layer, another component. And it's learning how to take that, you know, parts of your old identity or previous identity and emerging it with the new identity and then learning how to accept what that looks like, what Mm -hmm. that feels like. And more importantly, embracing that it's not perfect, that you're not always going to know, you know, what it feels like, or some days you might not even like it, right? So we were talking previously that wearing hats, wearing different roles at work, like Mm -hmm. you're a professional, but then there's that side of you that wants to bring out pictures, show your phone, you know, to your colleague, well, this is my child, but not knowing if it's appropriate. And so we kind of, we kind of stopped, you know, in our backs, but it's like, I'm realizing, and this can be kind of what I feel is one of my tips for balancing is I don't feel like you can be in both roles and do them at like a 10. So right. you can't be this professional person and, and competing at this, like I'm, I'm, I'm up here, right? I'm elevated. I'm working at a 10 and then switch to mom mode and be at a 10, right? Yeah. I feel like you kind of have to give attention to one or the other in that moment, but then the other lacks, Right. Right. So it's like, if I'm being this professional and I'm being a therapist and I'm doing my work, I'm getting everything done and I feel good about it. Then there's a part of me that freaks out because I'm like, but I miss playtime. Then I miss lunch. I miss miss something so cute that she said, because it's been recorded and my sitter sends it to me. And I'm like, is this life? Like, is this okay? But yet on the day that I'm with her, I'm thinking, oh, I can get this, you know, assignment done, or I need to get this done. I can do some research or I can do this. So it's, what, what part of that, what gives, and I'm wondering mm-hmm. what is that experience like for you and in, in the roles that you take on? Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's so hard. I think too, with just the time that we're in right now and the kids are, I'm home, which is a really, um, unique place to be in because I've always been, um, I mean, there are times I, I wasn't home till seven o'clock, eight o'clock at night. And, and then my kids would want all of my attention and I'm holding on to all this stuff for my day, you know, the heaviness from just working with clients all day and um, just being exhausted. And I will say, I really love being home because um, it has taught me, it has taught me to balance a lot more because, um, you know, it is, it is weird to work at home because even though there's a door right there, that doesn't mean my kids have any, they don't even like know that that's, that door (laughs) might potentially, even if they hear me talking, that doesn't mean that, you know, they, they don't see it as, oh, do not enter. It's, hey, I need mom. So, and, you know, I do, I really appreciate having, I have really amazing clients that, you know, just, and that's why I always wear headphones because I just, you know, to try to keep everything in here. So, um, if that door does open or I, I sometimes have fingers <laughs> coming through the door and, um, and it's so hard, but I try my best to have my work when I'm, when I have my work hat on, I have my work hat on and it's really hard for me to be, to switch to mom mode when I have my work hat on. And I think the kids have kind of accepted that and, and understood that that's kind of where we are. When I, in my last session, then I take my work hat off and then I can be a mom mode. And that means that we have the rest of the day or the evening or 
um, but I think it's always, always something that I'm working at, but just making sure I'm in one, like when I'm in work mode, I'm in work mode. And when I'm in mom mode, I'm in mom mode because mm. it's really easy. I think with, you know, even technology, it's so easy to just be in this like place, like where we multitask mm -hmm. and it's so easy to just check that message that we got or to check that email, that, that notification. And, you know, I have to really be cognizant because I don't ever want my kids to think that, um, that working or being a working mom is an inconvenience sure. or that it's a priority. Yeah. But I think also living in Southern California, there, it, it is hard. You, I feel like there, we kind of have to work a lot more mm -hmm. than you have to work more because it costs a little more to, or a little more, it costs is. more to live here. So you've got to work more. And, but I don't ever want my kids to think like work is life. And so I do really try to balance that, um, you know, so they understand it's work isn't life, but work is something that is part of me that I really enjoy, but there's a time for work and a time for, for being mom. And it's hard. It's so hard. I mean, there's, I know. And then, you know, just no secret times you mentioned is working from home. So you don't really have a separation. You know, my daughter still, I think there's being respectful that I'm at work. She doesn't really know, but Hey, every once in a while I get a knock at the door or yell at the door. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, what, what's happening here. But what I think I yeah. hear you saying is incorporating mindfulness in yeah. the sense mm -hmm. of saying, okay, I can't be in two places at once. That's impossible. And if I try, I'm not going to be able to give my all in both places. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'll be at work, but not fully at work or I'm with my children and not fully present because I'm thinking about work. So what I hear you saying is, you know, as a possible tip as well is yeah. be where you're at and just try to be in the moment as much as you can and to just enjoy what you have in front of you. And when you leave is also mentally leaving that space and saying mm -hmm. work is done, whether that's location to location, or you just open the door and say, okay, work is in here. And now I get to go and be with my children and really be with them and enjoy that. And until the next thing comes up, right. Cause there's always something there's right. always something. And as moms, I think it's hard to even complete that task because we're always thinking five steps ahead, right. Where it's, it's like, we're playing playtime, but we're thinking about what's for dinner. How am I going to cook it? How am I going to entertain them? How many get this, this, and that to the point where you're like in bedtime should be, you know, so. Right. Oh my gosh. That's so, yeah. It's yeah, it's hard. I, I know I, I was just today. I just um, booked an appointment and as I'm looking through, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's when my kids pick up time is. And it's just these things that when I wasn't working from home, I didn't have to think about because maybe they would go to daycare or it just, you know, I was at work. And so it's just, I'm still, even though I've been kind of in this since whatever, I guess the beginning of the school year, yeah. um, it's still, I still am finding myself like, oh my gosh, I, for some reason, just these routines, I think that we get used to just don't, I don't know, for me, they're just, they don't always click. So I'm like, ah, I, that's how am I supposed to have an appointment here and pick them up. And, but you know what, I'm figuring it out and it's, it's so far it's been okay. But, but that time for me, and I know the kids know that when I get to drive them to school, when I pick them up, that is like our sacred time. I love, there's nothing I love more than taking my kids to school and picking them up. And so we always, you know, I'm always making sure that that's, that's our time. And, you know, even if it's just a few minutes in the morning, few minutes in the afternoon, um, it, for me, it's like a recharge and just kind of reminding myself that, you know, this is, this is, I don't know, it's just good. Good to yeah. use those cute little kids as, as a, a little break, I guess. It sounds like but, you're taking everyday moments to cherish. So right now we're on, you know, working moms, you're on the go, go, go. But mm -hmm. instead of maybe overwhelming yourself saying, what do I do with my kids to make them understand, you know, for the older kids? How do I make sure they know that they're important and I'm not making work a priority and that, you know, they come first. It sounds like you are taking these little experiences like the car ride, right? Whether it's yeah. 10 minutes, five minutes, and you're cherishing them and creating something special 
in mm-hmm. that moment. and I'm assuming like on the car ride home same thing right you're making these little moments worth it and yeah. I think that is also something to um, acknowledge for all you moms out there that you don't have to think of these grand things to do with your kids like where am I going to take them and you know during this the pandemic there's a lot of things that are shut down but let's not forget that our kids attach to how we love them right, right. how we make them feel and it's not going to be about what's the most extravagant gift you can give them or what's the most extravagant experience because we're limited right now, right? We really are. And whether that's the pandemic, whether it's your personal finances, whether it's the lack of support, whatever your situation might be, because, you know, we're all different. It's reminding us, reminding ourselves that at the end of the day, our children are going to remember how we love them and how we make them feel. And if that means 10 minutes out of your day, you give them their full attention you're asking them about their day, you're laughing with them, those are the moments they're going to remember. That's what makes you an amazing mom. That's the, the things that we're going to hold on to. I can, I can speak from personal experience. I don't really remember all of the things I did as a youngster, but I do remember the support and love, the constant support and love that I felt from my parents. And yeah. I think that's what carries weight. So you know, just want to throw that out there for those of you who are like scrambling, like, what do I do during this time? It's like, just take those small moments and right. remember your kids are going to remember exactly how you made them feel. And mm-hmm. that is going to be huge, huge. I love yeah. that. Yeah. It's small. I mean, it's like, even the, I was just thinking, even the smallest things like, um, like my bathroom is downstairs and they're bathroom is is upstairs and something so silly where I'm like brush your teeth and then they go upstairs to brush their teeth and then I brush mine downstairs and then um and then in the when it was really hot we let the kids sleep in the living room because it was just too hot upstairs and they had their toothbrushes downstairs in the bathroom and I'm like we're all brushing our teeth together and it's like the silliest thing but you know it's I think I don't know. I maybe just like things you take for granted, but I remember just like we were all brushing our teeth in the bathroom and just, it was just like, I don't know, just fun. And, and it's just really being mindful of those moments. And I think just being grateful and acknowledging them and making any moment, just, I think just taking every moment for what it is, because, you know, I'm going to work, I'm going to be working, you know, oh, an eight, nine hour day, but I have this moment right now. And this is all that matters. And just taking those moments that it's something as silly as just brushing your teeth together or, you know, talking in the car, singing a fun song on the way to school. And just, you know, those moments, those are, that's, what's really important. I think connecting and yeah, it's just finding balance. And you know what, sometimes I lay down at night and I'm like, I don't feel like I connected with my kids at all. Mm. Um, but, but it's mom again, guilt. being mindful. Yeah. Mom guilt mom and mom guilt, guilt is, it. it's so real, but I think just acknowledging, <laughs> oh, would you say it? Mind guilt. I don't know. <laughs> mom guilt. Yeah. But I think also just acknowledging you know, like that idea of the good enough mom, you know what I acknowledge I didn't do it today, but I'm going to make a conscious effort tomorrow to just be more present. And that's all we can do. We can learn from yeah we don't feel guilty we can't kick ourselves just just learn from it and say if I did I didn't like that I wasn't present enough so I'm going to make an effort tomorrow and you know I find myself going there a lot because you know you can only fit so many hours in a day yeah no absolutely and I think that's an an excellent example of what self-care could look like You know, I mean, self-care is such a buzzword these days, right? It's hashtag this, hashtag that. And we also set these high expectations of what self-care could look like. But in mom world, um, it looks a little bit different. We tend to forget about ourselves because sometimes we have to, right? That's just, that's just the name of the game. Sometimes there isn't time for us and we have to follow that and say, this is what it feels like to be a mom today. So there's no time. That's okay. But then I think we we make these grand ideas of what self-care could look like, and then we overwhelm ourselves and then we never get to it. So right. something like what you just mentioned is when I go to bed tonight, I'm going to give myself a little pep talk, right? It's, it's a real conversation, a raw conversation with, Hey, 
I don't really like how today went or I don't like the way it felt so much. And not from a place of shame, but yeah. just awareness. Awareness. Absolutely. Yeah. Just being aware of what you felt, taking moments, a moment, it's literally a moment out of your day to say, let me check in with myself. How was my day? You're talking to yourself and mm -hmm. making sure that you are acknowledging what a badass mom you are. And if you didn't like something today, you're going to change it tomorrow or just be a little bit more aware of how you spend your day the next day so that you can have more of those wins, more of those mm -hmm. moments. And self-care is such a big deal in our world. And yeah. most of us forego it. Why? For our children, because that's what we yeah. do. We're self-sacrificing. I it know. Normal. Yet then we, we guilt ourselves for it later. And then the mm -hmm. mom, the mom guilt sets in and we start going down this rabbit hole. And I also want to remind any of our viewers, if you're feeling mom guilt, it is so normal. It's so how there's nothing wrong with you. It comes from a place of love. We right. love children so much. It's actually like embarrassing how much we love them and what we would do for them and how we just, you know, make over them that that's where it comes from. It's not coming from an awful place. It's like, yo, I love my kids so much. I'm shaming myself right now. That is ridiculous. Let me just stop and enjoy the last 10 minutes of my day and take care of me. Yeah. 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 I know it's, uh, and I think self-care sometimes too. I know like if I have a day off of work or, you know, I just have an extra few hours, my first thought is what can the kids and I go do? Like what, what, what can I do to spend more time with them? And, and so I think that just shows that our first instinct or for me, I'm, you know, and I've heard you say this too before. Like if I have, if I have that time, I either I'm going to be, I want to be with my kids and I, or kid. Um, but for me, if I have that time, I want to make it a quality moment with my kids. And it's hard to take myself out and say, well, I want to spend the day to myself, or I'm going to take a few hours away from home. And, and I think that does come from a place of guilt because I am really cramming I'm trying to balance like, you know, this day. Well, some of those hours are devoted to maybe dinner or cleaning or whatever. And then you've got work to balance, bedtime, kids, all of that you're trying to balance. And, you know, if I have a, if I have a day off, I feel like I need to like make up on my parenting or something, mm -hmm. but really I need to make up on my self-care too. And I feel like it's just probably it's very normal, but I find myself um, choosing to spend quality time, almost like a makeup time rather than I'm going to go treat myself to something. And, but, you know, it's okay. And I like, Liana, you have this post um, that you put on social media about how self care is not selfish. I thought that was such a powerful, I don't know if that's how it was worded, but just the message was so powerful. And I remember, I remember it like just reading it and I think I'm like, just stopped. I'm like, that is so, oh my gosh, <laughs> what a message. What a concept. Because, <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh man. And we all know it. Who may not even feel what we're feeling. They're like, these, these broads are crazy. Like, I don't feel any of that. I feel good about it. We're just <laughs> jealous. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Right. We haven't right. figured it out yet. <laughs> right. I know. Like, like, why can't we just run with it? And I think that just goes to show that we're all different. We're mm -hmm. all different. We experience motherhood differently. Right now, Renee and I are speaking on things that we, we really connect with, right? Because I think one of the balancing acts is your social support, your support system, your, um, your tribe. If I didn't have the, the people in my life, and they're mainly women, but some are, are, are male as well. If I didn't have them to rant and rave and to bounce ideas off of or say, hey, is this like normal? If I didn't have that experience, I don't know where I'd be right now. I, oh, I, totally need, agree. I need this space. And I think this was kind of cool for us to do this together because we do it already. But these are things we're talking about that we connect with. And there's definitely other avenues of our lives that we don't connect with where I'm like hmm, okay no I'm not there yet or she might look at me like yeah maybe but I don't really know that's the beauty about these conversations is that you're getting yeah. out you're not isolating yourself right another tip is the more you keep in the more you go inward and the more mm -hmm. you take on as a mom and at some point it's not going to be the healthiest for you 
right? right? Or your child or whoever it is that's in your circle, in your home or whatever. But it does affect you, right? Keeping that in. So just being able to have a quick conversation or a text message to say, this is the safe space for us. Mm-hmm. This is the right. space for us to just be us. And we mentioned this in our, our non-live uh, conversation earlier, is that we're not experts in this. We never, I would never claim to be an expert in, in motherhood. Um, I'm fairly new to it, but I do feel like at the end of the day, you are the expert of your own, um, your family, motherhood, uh, your child, you live with that day in, day out. You live with yourself, you live with your child, your career. And it's just really trusting yourself that you know what's best for you, that you don't have to look at other people or compare yourself to say, am I doing this right? Ask yourself, does it feel right for you? Is everything that you're doing or maybe a lot of what you're doing, does it feel right for you? And if the answer is yes, then keep on rolling, do it. And if it's no, we take that moment to look inward, right? We take a moment to, to check to our inventory and say, what's not feeling right for us? Because if it's not feeling right for us, then it's not your motherhood. It's not your experience. And that's that would be awful to not be able to own it and say, this is what motherhood is for me. And I'm okay with it. And I'm the one that lives in it day in and day out. I'm just, I, I don't know what it would feel like. Well, actually I do, because I did it for a while, trying to like, look at others and go, oh, I'm not doing this right. <laughs> I would be like, I, I'm awful. I, I shouldn't have been a mom. Like, I don't know what to do. But being able to say, no, you know what? I got this. And if yeah. I don't, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to lean on my tribe. I'm going to yeah. be able to look at that support. And I'm going to text Renee and be like, hey, I need to bounce I, something off of you right now. Yeah. It's, it's I, I was just, yeah, when you were saying that, I was thinking how there's so many, I feel like a lot of ledges you've, I mean, you're saying you're not an expert and you're a new mom, but you've walked me off a lot of ledges where I'm like, oh, I can't do this. What a day. Listen to this day. And and I feel like you're always such a good voice of reason. And, and to me, it's really important to be okay sharing how you're feeling and your experiences Mm -hmm. and saying, I'm afraid, or I'm, I'm feeling guilty or I'm feeling whatever uncomfortable feeling you're feeling. But it's so important to make sure that you have a tribe that you trust Um, because, you know, you could say, I'm feeling really vulnerable. I'm feeling really whatever. And then, you know, you might not get, if you're not going to somebody who is really supportive and you just maybe need to vent, then I think, you know, just, just make sure that you, um, you know, you're sharing these things with some, with a, you know, in a place where you really in a really safe place because it can hurt when you are very open and raw and then somebody gives you feedback that you it's like oh I knew better I knew that was the wrong place to 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 put this and you know and that's okay but just know um you know I think it's important to just really have that tribe that of people that you can trust and to feel safe um and I know Liana we we've and Emily we've all kind of created these conversations where we talk about, uh, you know, working, we're being a working mom and just how we laugh about how challenging it can be. And um, also kind of vent about how stressful it can be. And so I feel like it's so important to just be able to have a space where you can say, I'm having a day and I know I can dump this here and, and have no judgment and not walk away feeling ashamed for anything I just said, you know, being raw and real. And I think that's so important. And, and it has, and it's, it hasn't always been like that for me either. So it's, you know, it's, I know it's easy to say, find a tribe that you can really trust and, 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 you know, but I promise when you meet your people, you know, that you're, they're your people. And sometimes it comes from being authentic and just, just realizing the more authentic and more, you know, you open up to people, it really helps to connect you. Um, I feel like I couldn't have gotten through, you know, like my son, I, a lot of um, his friends, moms that I've connected with. And it's just so nice to be, you know, I'm really, I, I don't understand this. I'm really whatever. And then to just connect with them and then to just feel like, I don't know, just that support back and get that feedback. Like, oh, I totally know what you mean. And, and to just kind of normalize those feelings, because if you, if you hold all of that in, you feel like 
you feel like you're the only one who's feeling like this. And if you just put yourself out there, I think that was kind of the, the message, just, you know, put yourself out there and, and know that being vulnerable is okay. Yeah. And I've got, see, I've got door these. They're like, you always, a, always, always a hand. I know always a hand coming through the door. Um, but just, yeah, just being able just, you know, put yourself out there because it is, it is a very lonely place when you feel like you're the only person going through this experience. And it feels, it feels really good to be able to just vent and I do it. So I really appreciate that. And I appreciate having that a, in a work environment where, you know, we can just sit there and say, work is stressful. Kids are stressful. This day is just not working. And, you know, just to be able to support each other. It feels so good. I feel like in a work environment, especially to be able to do that. Absolutely. I mean, like if you've been mom shamed, throw your hand up, right? Like, <laughs> Yeah, That's I have been right. shamed and it doesn't feel good. It's like, no. you know, the immediate reaction is what am I doing wrong? And that's the worst yeah. feeling when most of us are winging it, right? Most yeah. of us are like, Hey, I, I don't know what to do exactly, but like Renee mentioned, you know, finding that tribe and it is, it's being vulnerable and seeing what happens. So brace yourself for sure. Right. Yeah. Brace yourself and you're either going to get the reaction, actually not a reaction, but the response that is going to be a helpful one. Um, or you're going to get one that feels awful. And when it feels awful, please have, you know, I, I think courage is probably one of the tips we can talk about tonight or, or just lightly touch on is having courage to know that you can walk away from a situation that doesn't make you feel empowered or doesn't make you feel like it's it's a support system having that courage to say you know what i choose me today and i choose my mm -hmm. experience and i don't deserve to to be mom shamed i don't deserve right. to have these judgments upon me because guess what i do it for myself already right, I, right. I just, i'm already my biggest critic i don't need more <laughs> Yeah. So just, you know, tapping into that courageous person, you had a baby, you're courageous. Okay. So if you feel like you're not take that out of your mind, you had, uh, you grew a baby, you had a baby, you're raising a child. You are courageous in, in your own, in your own worth. You are a courageous person. Sometimes we just have to reach in and really, really tap into it and say, is this good for me? Is this going to give me balance in my life? Because not only am I a mom, I'm also a working mom. I have a lot of roles to fulfill and I enjoy this life, right? So tapping into that part of you and saying, I can be courageous as a mother. I can be courageous as a woman and I can be a, uh, courageous as a professional. I can do all these things, but it's knowing my limits, right? right. Knowing your limits, knowing when to say, I need some help here. I do. And, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to circle back around to work environment since this is our topic. And I am so blessed and grateful to have found an environment where I can be myself, which includes being a mom. There is space being held for us where we don't have to decide. And I know that's not the experience for a lot of people. I do understand that. But if you can find that place, find a place that accepts you for who you are and doesn't make you feel shameful for being a mom and having these raw experiences. It does help. And if you can't, which is probably going to be more of the story here is also kind of tapping into that courageous part of you and saying, Hey, I have boundaries. I have limits and I, I'm going to work with it. Right. And just knowing that you have it in you. And we could probably go on for another 30 minutes about what more we can do um, to find balance. But hopefully we've shed some light on our experience. And we really just here to relate. We want to relate to you all. We want to be able to hear your stories and to learn from you as well. You know, we learn from each other, we learn from our experiences. And we just wanted to have this moment to share a little bit about what works for us, what we've encountered. And we're gonna encounter a lot more that's not gonna be the greatest. And then maybe have some wonderful moments, but um, we really appreciate the time that we have had here with you all. And we hope to maybe even continue this conversation or add another modality, right? Motherhood and something else, right? right. We'll, we'll start earlier this time. We, we will we'll hit record.
<laughs> we'll start earlier. We won't keep you up so late. Absolutely. And just to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to leave off with a message and Renee, please feel free to as well. I, I do want to say this. I know we added some tips here and there about what works for us, but something that I've learned, I think is so important is it's not so much about that list, right? Like, what do I need to be as a mom? What are my tips? A lot of times it's just reaching inward, taking a moment to yourself, being aware of what's going on, getting to know you, right? Getting to know the person that you are, the mother that you are, the woman that you are, the professional that you are, and asking yourself what feels good for you. What is it that you want out of this? And just owning it, just owning that part of you. And I'm still working on it. I'm so still working on it. But with what we've talked about tonight, I feel like I'm getting somewhere and it's feeling a lot better. And I'm going to have a lot of speed bumps and road bumps and all of the bumps you can think about. But so far, that is my biggest um, mess. The, one of the messages or biggest message that I want to convey is that it's really just about you and really getting mm -hmm. to know you and understanding where you want to be. And you have to be that courageous courageous mother that you are because you you're in you're you're there you got it i don't think i could top that that was really good i i, I do want to reiterate i really like one of the points that you made just you know know your limits and learn to really just really listen to them and if you need to say no say no if you need to take a day off take a day off just know your limits because that'll, I think that'll help guide you because you can push yourself really hard and then you can't balance when you're just, you know, stretched way too thin. So know your limits. And yeah, I like that. That was a good, I stole that from you, but I really liked it. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for listening. Yes. Maybe we'll come back and uh, continue the motherhood talk. If you have any, any suggestions on anything you'd like to hear or talk about, um, please feel free to, you know, drop a comment and we, uh, yeah, we wish you a good night and we'll start on time next time. Yeah. Have a good rest of your week, everyone. Bye, Liana. Bye. Thank you for spending some of your time today with us at Sage Holistic Health and Wellness Center. If you like what we're all about, please consider supporting our nonprofit organization by making a tax deductible donation. To do this, you can go to our website at www.sagewellnessctr.org and click on Donate in the upper right-hand corner. We look forward to spending some time again with you real soon. Take good care.